Hi, my name is George Cao. Welcome to this ABC Wisdom Hour. ABC stands for the Authentic Business Community, and we are a group of kindred spirits who are supporting one another on a regular basis as we each build our own authentic business. So I'm very happy to welcome you to what we call the Wisdom Hour, and today you're going to hear three speakers who are going to share some of their most important life lessons, their frameworks that can really help us to live a more fulfilling and free life and to build a better business. Um, this is always one of my favorite hours of the month, and I think you're going to leave this hour more uplifted and a, a bit wiser to continue living into your purpose and building a business that you can be really proud of. So next, uh, our, our last speaker is Nikki Pava. And let me just read to you her bio and I'll bring her on. So Nikki has been, in, has been a leader in the sustainable and green business movement for 10 years. She was named one of the top 10 women in clean tech and sustainability. Nikki founded an organization called Eco Tuesday which was a networking forum that facilitated connections and change in, in the business community. Eco Tuesday had more than 300 events in 12 cities across the, the United States and brought together hundreds of sustainability professionals and they made an impact, a positive impact in, in every city. Nikki's background also includes traveling the world, interviewing CEOs and managing directors of some of the world's largest companies. Her interviews focused on long-term economic strategy, environmental impact, and social responsibility endeavors within the companies. A few years ago, she founded a company called Allegria Partners, and they work with entrepreneurs and business leaders today to design, implement, and measure sustainability strategies that can be profitable. Uh, currently, Nikki is working on a book focused on climate action teams within companies. Sometimes in companies, they're called green teams. Um, the book will showcase how these green teams or climate action teams are integrated into their company's business model. So it's not just a, a charitable thing, but it's actually integrated into the business model of, of the company. The book will share best practices and explain how they manage, how these teams manage and overcome breakdowns. Uh, welcome, Nikki. It's so great to have you here. And let me make sure that your mic is unmuted. There you go. Great. Hi, Nikki. Thank you. Thanks, George. Well, I thought I would start my presentation out with a quote from a woman, a woman that I truly admire. Her name is Rachel Carson, and she was one of the first people to, in, in our modern times, to bring attention to the fact that businesses and companies are having a devastating impact on our planet. So here goes. The more clearly we can focus our attention on the wonders and realities of the universe about us, the less taste we shall have for destruction. We've experienced a few hundred years of status quo in business. For a long time, we were conditioned to think that it was okay for companies to pollute our rivers and our oceans, at the same time taking advantages of entire communities of people devastating their ecosystems and paying them low wages for the work they do, all at the expense of increasing profits and putting more money into shareholders' pockets. Companies push lawmakers to create legal loopholes to keep the businesses in place and above the law so that they don't need to follow the rules and regulations that provide positive social and environmental structures. 16 years ago, I worked for a newspaper called the Japan Times newspaper. I had the unique opportunity to live in places all over the world and interview the CEOs and the managing directors of some of the biggest companies in the world. These companies made so many of the products we loved, the major electronics companies, technology companies, lifestyle companies, you name it. And many of these products are things that we think that we probably couldn't live without. And I was in major business hubs around the world. I lived in Berlin, Bangkok, and Dubai. And I noticed throughout all of these interviews that all of these companies were very different from one another, although they did have one thing in common. They, almost none of them had any environmental structures or any thoughts about what was going on in our global changing world with climate. 
I would ask each person during these interviews about their business plan, their customers, their new product launch, everything about their business. And they would talk for hours. And sometimes they would even talk for more than an hour, going into two hours because they were so excited to talk about themselves. <laughs> and they were just lit up. And I would always ask them about their, social, their company's social and environmental contributions to the world. So for example, I would be at, I was in a, a meeting in Dubai and I looked outside the window and I said, so I see that you're planning a major hotel development right here on the shores of the beautiful Persian Gulf. Can you tell me a little bit about your plans for the, what's the, how it's gonna impact the sea life or all the animals that are on the, on, that are on the beach? Or I would ask them, okay, so all of the, this huge community of people that have all of their houses right here on the beach, they've been living there for dozens of years, where are they going to go when you put in your huge hotel? And so many times, all the times when I would ask questions like that to all of these leaders all over the world, their face would just go deadpan. They did not want to talk to me about how their, their plans were going to disrupt the natural environment or how the, they, they plan to pay these workers cents per hour so that they can work in the hot sun to build this business leader's empire. They wanted to change the subject and they wanted to change the subject fast. You have no, many, you have no idea how many times I was offered a second cup of coffee, just right then. You want another cup of coffee? So it, was, it started to get really hard on my heart and made a huge, deep impact on me. And I just kept on asking, what will it take to get these business leaders to wake up? And I'd always been an environmentalist. I grew up in Washington State in the United States. So we had recycling when I was really young. It's not something I had to learn when I was older. And I was also born on Earth Day. So I feel like there's environmentalism embedded in my DNA. And yet, despite having this deep connection to eco ways, I hadn't necessarily thought about focusing my entire life and my life, my career path on sustainability until experiencing these conversations with these business leaders over and over again throughout, these, throughout that year. These were the leaders of companies that make millions of products that we use every day, that we've become so dependent on. These companies have huge advertising dollars. They have so many millions of dollars to spend per year. And there's people who have jobs just to get people like me and you and our children hooked, totally addicted to what they have to offer. These are the companies that have brands that get us consciously and unconsciously. They, they shape our culture. They fill us up with desire and competition to get more. And sadly, they create the widespread consumerism that has an impact on our values, beliefs, and desires. These companies were created to sell things and make money for their shareholders with little thought for what they're doing to our planet's dwindling resources and changing climate. Hearing these men, and I say men because 99% of the people I talk to around the world in these companies were men, talk so proudly about their business prowess and milestones that they achieved really started to hurt my heart. Throughout this experience, there was a huge shift taking place in me. I realized that I wanted to be part of this global transformation in business where business leaders and the people who worked within the companies started designing and creating products in the most sustainable way possible. And as a result of this transformation, I decided to shift all my energy into working with sustainable businesses to create more eco-friendly and sustainable products and services. And now, 16 years after that life-changing revelation, there are more and more companies that are embracing the frameworks to become on a more sustainable and conscious path. On a micro level, so many small towns and larger cities have entire departments that are completely dedicated to helping local businesses go green. Additionally, there are a handful of structures that companies can implement to make their company more sustainable, such as the natural step or the triple bottom line framework. Also, companies can be a part of the B Corp community. That means they, they add on a bylaw into, into their company's papers that says that social and in, the social and environmental aspect of their business is just as important 
as the financial aspect of their business. It's pretty amazing. And having a B Corp logo on a company's website or a product is pretty much just a seal of awesomeness. And on a macro level, there are a lot of organizations that are helping companies with all of these sustainability initiatives. So there is the Carbon Disclosure Pro Project, which is an organization that helps companies track and disclose their, their greenhouse gas emissions for, for their company so the world can know about it. And also every year, the United Nations hosts a, hosts a huge conference where business leaders and political leaders and environmental leaders all come together to discuss climate change and all of the other very important environmental issues of our times. But even with all this help and all these frameworks, the real change in business must come from deep within the leaders. Wouldn't it be great if all companies decreased their emissions and took more account into their designs so that less resources were needed? And they also paid their workers for the, creating the projects fairly and equitably? What if food companies stopped using poison in the food so that our long-term health benefits would just increase positively? What if clothing companies only designed and produced clothes that would last a lifetime so that we didn't need to buy more? Or what if appliance companies made appliances that were more durable and that didn't need to be replaced? And don't even get me started on technology companies that make our little things like phones, which are strategically created to die after a a certain period of time so that of course we need to go buy the next version. And these just go into our landfill for years and years to come. So even with all of those structures and frameworks in place that I just mentioned for companies, companies to do good, companies, there are still companies out there that are doing bad for the world. The latest and most controversial company, in, in my opinion, that is having a negative impact on the planet is Energy Transfer Partners. This is the company that is responsible for the Dakota Access Pipeline in the United States. Not only is this pipeline devastating the plants and animals and the community in its path hundreds of miles, but it's, it, is also, it has also been planned to go through sacred Native American lands for the Sioux Nation. And if there's a problem with the pipeline, for example, if there's an oil leak, the entire company's natural resources and their food supply, they, it could have a huge impact and possibly devastate it. Everything that they nurtured for so many decades, hundreds of years, could be gone. To me, it's clear that none of the business leaders at, at energy, uh, energy Transfer Partners have had an, an internal revelation have really thought about what they could do to have a more positive impact on the planet. But I do have some good news. So there is change and transformation possible in business. There have been other business owners who've had revelations that have occur occurred in their personal lives that have completely transferred into their business and changed their business path. One of the most famous examples, in my opinion, is that of Ray Anderson, who is the founder of Interface. Interface is a carpet company that was started in 1973. It is the world's biggest carpet company out there. And carpet is an is incredibly, it uses an incredible amount of resources, energy and water and car, everything to create every little bit of fabric. Back in, in the early 90s, there are a few people on Anderson's team who were planting seeds in his mind to get their company to become more sustainable. But Anderson was resistant. He didn't really know much about sustainability. And when the environmental task force came to him and said, we want you to launch our environmental vision and share it with the company at this upcoming company meeting, he realized that he did not have uh, an environmental vision. He had no care. He didn't know anything about it. So to get inspiration, he decided to read Paul Hawkins' book called The Ecology of Commerce. And according to Anderson, he said this was a spear in the chest. And he realized that his company was an integral part in the devastation and the destruction of the planet with what they were doing to make their carpets. So this book 
coupled with the seeds that were planted from a few amazing employees, inspired, inspired an important pivotal transformation in him. And after he had this huge revelation and realized that it was his duty and Interface's, Interface's duty to climb Mount Sustainability. He made a huge shift in the company. And this was in 1994. This happened 21 years after he founded the company and he was 60 years old. Since then, Interface has made huge strides in changing their entire manufacturing process and is focused on long-term thinking. Since 1996, the company has decreased its energy use by 45%, its water use by 87%, and its greenhouse gas emissions by 92%. And I think these are pretty incredible, incredible numbers. And recently, Interface declared its new initiative called Mission Zero, which means that the company would have no environmental impact by 2020. One of the most unique strategies that Interface has implemented is to use fishing nets discarded by local fishermen in the Philippines, pay these local fishermen for these unneeded fishing lines, and they use them into their carpet. It's an amazing example of reuse of our resources. This incredible transformation occurred because of the inner work that Anderson experienced, along with the seeds that company employees planted. He took incredible risky actions to completely change an industry, which I think it's an, a beautiful legacy for a human to leave behind. What about you? Do you know of a company that you truly love, but you see it's going down the wrong path? If it's using, un, is it using unsustainable practices, practices that are a detriment to our plants and animals and communities? If that's the case, I urge you, I, I implore you to go to that company's website, click on the contact page and write a letter to the company. Or find the name of the CEO and write a letter to the CEO. You never know, it's possible that that leader is thinking of doing, creating a change. They might be, listening, but the outcry from the stakeholders just hasn't been felt yet. And it could be you that makes the change. Think of the people who planted the seeds in Ray Anderson's heart and brain. It could be your letter or your email or your public Facebook post that goes viral or your tweet that is the catalyst for a huge shift for that company that you pinpointed. And it could, be, it could help them on a much more sustainable path. And what if the leaders of energy transfer partners, or even especially the leader of the upcoming leader of the United States of America, what if those people had similar revelations that Ray Anderson had back in 1994? What would our world look like then? <laughs> and what about you? We have the power to shape, the, to shape our paths. Have you had that moment in your life where you closed your eyes you took a deep breath and you really thought about the future that you wanted to create with your precious life? Did you, did you capitalize on that idea or did you put it in a drawer not to be heard from again? Today is the time to make the change, to put action in those ideas, get them out of the drawers and make it happen. Because think about your legacy. What is it that you want to leave behind? Hmm. If, if all business leaders took a moment to focus on the wonders of life, the beauty of nature, and really allowed themselves to tap into their gifts toward humanity, it's quite possible that all the world would, all these business leaders would experience a huge inner transformation that could shift their companies into being less destructive, as Rachel Carson mentioned in her quote. And that's the future that I want for all of us to experience. Thank you. Um, Nikki, do you want to share something before we, before we adjourn the call? Sure. As you mentioned at the beginning, uh, I'm writing a book focused on climate action teams in businesses and how they work together, what their best practices are, and what they do when things uh, there's a lull in their energy. You know, my thought is to create... Uh, to share best practices so other companies could replicate them so we can have a huge global transformation in business. Mm. And I know a lot of the business leaders that I've talked to have had their 
personal transformations that they've applied to their businesses. So my request and invitation would be that if you know of a company that would be good to be profiled in my book, I would love to hear from you. And better yet, if you have a personal contact with someone at a company in the sustainability department or social responsibility department, I would love to hear from them. So please go to my website at www.allegriapartners.com and contact me through the website. Thanks. Um, and Nikki, do you want to mention a few of the companies that you've already interviewed for this book? Sure, I have. I've interviewed Interface, the company that I've mentioned. I've interviewed uh, New Resource Bank. I most likely will be interviewing Patagonia. I interviewed Better World Books yesterday. So it's companies in all different types of industry. I, you know, I don't want to silo myself into one specific industry. Awesome. Thanks, Nikki.